are we ready, boys, to do this for the Saturday of Championship Weekend? Let's do it indeed. And let's start with the Atlantic 10. Interesting, they've had a bunch of upsets, and they didn't play Friday. Scheduled day of rest in the A-10 tournament. So the semifinal games are back for Saturday. And game number one is St. Bonaventure and Duquesne, both with upsets, obviously, to get here. Neither one of these teams on the radar at all for the NCAA tournament, but somebody's going to be in the championship game come Sunday at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. All right, uh, Duquesne is the slight one-point favorite. The total is 134.5. Let's begin the discussion. Kyle Hunter, thoughts on this in the A-10, sir? Get us underway. I tend to think that whoever wins this game has a decent shot. I know VCU uh, rated pretty highly, but I, I do think um, both of these teams are really well coached. Both of these teams have been playing to the pace that they want to play at. Um, St. Bonaventure playing slow-paced games here of late, just 61 possession against uh, LaSalle, and then the double overtime win against Loyola, 78 possessions in two overtimes, so not too fast in that one either. Duquesne is the team that I want to highlight the most, though. Uh, their defense has really improved a lot here down the stretch. Allowed one point per possession or fewer in six of their last eight games. Um, they've played four of their last six games to a pace of 63 possessions or fewer. So we, we've seen a lot of slow-paced games. Um, you guys know, usually when you get later on, these games mean more. Uh, this game obviously means a lot because these teams are not going to be in the tournament unless they win it. So um, when they mean more, the game usually slows down. The defense usually improves uh, a little bit tighter on offense. Uh, the first game between these two, 54-50. So they're more than capable of having a real low-scoring game, rock fight. Uh, I think this being win or go home, both teams want to play slow. I think the defenses show up. I'm going to take the under here in this one. All right. Uh, not surprising. And, and again, pay attention to this man. He's been hitting unders over and over and over again in March. And including here as part of championship week, hit one yesterday in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. Matt Cox to you to explain the Duquesne Dukes. Now, look, they did. They have won 20 games. They've won a couple of games in the tournament and had a bounce back. They beat Dayton, who a lot of people in bracketology have in the field at large. They beat Dayton back on Thursday uh, in a narrow win by eight. Shocking win, and again, there's now been a day off. Read that into the handicap for the Dukes here, who are the slight favorites, if you would, please, sir. Yeah, I think the day off is the only thing. If you were to line up every uh, node for an under here, I think that's the only thing you'd change. You'd want to have this maybe on a back-to-back. The fresher legs could could maybe open up the pace, but I think everything else Kyle said is, is just blowing so heavily uh, toward an ugly, low-scoring game, which doesn't really give an edge to either, either team. That's kind of been their mantra. Lately, um, I think Keith Dambrot for Duquesne wanted to play more open, more modern this year. But the way his roster evolved, his best players are up front. Um, David Dixon has been a beast on the block. They got some long, switchable wings that they like to really get out there and defend. And while Day Day Grant and Jimmy Clark are um, electric scorers, they can be really streaky. And you have to have a good backbone of a defense to keep you in games when they're not making shots. Same way goes for St. Bonaventure as well, right? Their offense is very execution-based, but they have their lulls. Similar with Mark Schmidt at the helm, built on defense. Um, I think this is just a really close game. I have no edge here on the side. I think the total toward the under um, is a great play. I actually like the under in the other game here as well. The unders have been a cash cow so far in the A-10 tournament here at Barclays. We'll see if the day off um, maybe loosens up that pace. But I think the the trend toward low scoring, ugly, with all these teams, you can just kind of see how tense they are, right? That's why all the top seeds went down, I think, last round. I think there's just so much... Um, you know, the, the high anxiety of a really good league, but no one's already guaranteed in that large spot creates right. you know, more of that, that tension, if you will. And I think that plays to a slower pace and you know, probably an ugly shooting game today, too. And again, for St. Bonaventure, they beat the two seed Loyola of Chicago on Thursday, doing so in a one point win. Uh, and now here we go with these two semifinals. Again, this is the second game up on the floor this afternoon in the Barclays Center. As uh, Matt alluded to, the first game is Virginia Commonwealth. And St. Joseph's, uh, again, St. Joe's pulled the upset of Richmond. The one, the two, the three, and the four, or, or the one, the two, and the three for sure are all gone. I think VCU in a tiebreaker is the four seed here in this. We care about St. Bonaventure and Duke. And you know what Kyle Hunter says? He cares about keep it low scoring. The first official play of Saturday is Kyle saying under 134 in the A-10 semifinal Again, nobody had either one of these two teams in the NCAA tournament. One of them will play 
for the automatic bid Sunday afternoon. That is what March is all about, kids. All right, there you go. Good stuff on that. Again, thank you for finding us.